It's time for Gail Shane and Friends, brought to you by Neal Communities, bringing you community and real estate talk throughout Sarasota and Manatee counties, including Lakewood Ranch. And now, here's Gail. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining Gail Shane and Friends. You can hear us worldwide at sarasotatalkradio.com and on your smartphones. A special thank you to our sponsor, Neal Communities, builder and developer in southwest Florida, celebrating stability, strength, and success for over 40 years. Neal Communities and John Neal Homes are now selling homes in 20 neighborhoods with great respect to the environment. Neal builds beautiful communities and lasting customer relationships with integrity and commitment. Today, we will be featuring Neal Communities' Eden Moore neighborhood located in Lakewood Ranch Country Club. Mia Engel tells us pricing at Eden Moore starts in the threes, and they have two brand new inventory homes ready to move in now. With the interest rates historically low, Mia reminds us that now is the time to buy. If you're thinking about building a brand new home, Eden Moore offers four new floor plans ranging from 1,600 to 2,140 square feet. <laughs> Mia invites you to visit Eden Moore, where you will find natural preserve views and lake and golf course views all within minutes to Lakewood Main Street for great shopping and fine dining. Enjoy a maintenance-free lifestyle with a gathering area, including pool, spa, and outdoor kitchen. Live, work, and play in Lakewood Ranch. See for yourself. Visit the Edenmore <coughs> Model, located 7491 Edenmore Street in the gated community of Lakewood Ranch Country Club. You can reach Mia at 907-1157. That's 941-907-1157. Or visit neilcommunities.com and thank you for thinking of Neil when you think of new. My co-host today is my friend Ian Harding with Keller Williams Realty. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Gail. How are you today? I'm just great. <laughs> Me too. It is another fantastic day in February. Uh, probably will reach over 80 degrees today. Fantastic, isn't it? I just love it here during the winter time. It's not that bad in the summer either. You know, we uh, actually do not experience uh, some of the really, really hot, heated, humid, sticky weather that other states experience. Yeah, and coming from the UK, it's just a big difference. And <clears throat> we get lots of envious comments uh, about what we're experiencing at the moment on the weather. So it's, uh, it's just great. We really, really do like living here. Well, we do love our winters, and there's so much going on. This weekend, I want to know what you're doing this weekend. I just want to shout out a few things that I think would be fun uh, today and tomorrow. Of course, we always have our downtown Sarasota Farmer's Market today. We have uh, the Exotic Car Fest going on at St. Armand Circle today, uh, and that benefits United Cerebral Palsy. We have the annual Plant and Garden Festival going on uh, 10 this morning at, at, at the um, Marie Selby Botanical Gardens. That should be fantastic. And um, spring training starts today with the Baltimore Orioles, and there's a game going on at 1 o'clock, Orioles versus the Minnesota Twins. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow, we need to remind everybody that Siesta Key has the farmer's market, and that's always something fun to go to and walk around Siesta. You know Siesta Key is uh, just voted, I believe, by TripAdvisor's number two <coughs> best beach in the I'm going to say the world, but that, that, yeah, probably. So um, what are you going to do this weekend, Ian? Well, I actually have tickets to see Muse. Uh, they're an English rock band, and they're playing at the Tampa Bay Times Forum this evening. So my wife and I and some friends are heading up there um, later this evening. Well, that's this evening. Now, how are you going to enjoy this great day today? Uh, well, you know, when I get away from the studio, I think we're just going to spend some time with the children this afternoon and just enjoy the weather, like you said. Um, probably hit the parks or in and around Lakewood Ranch, which is what we like to do during the weekend. Well, that sounds lovely. So let me tell everybody that joining you today, Ian, will be Sherry Phillips with Dash Management and Mary Smith with Family Network on Disabilities of Manatee, Sarasota. Also joining Ian and me today is Marvin Boisvert. Marvin is the president of Florida Event and Sports Marketing. Good morning, my friend Marvin. Good morning, Gail. How are you? I'm doing really well. You are, um, look great in, in blue today. Well, it's hard not to feel good when you're out in this kind of weather. It's just beautiful out here in Sarasota, as you know. So I know. It's going to be a, a, another awesome day as, as we 
keep saying, uh, you know, and just enjoy it. So, Marvin, uh, Florida Event and Sports Marketing, what do you do exactly? Well, it's a company that we launched two years ago. And basically, we run and manage uh, events, special events, uh, most of the times at sports. Uh, we've ran two professional golf tournaments for uh, RBC Bank as the title sponsor here in Sarasota, one at Legacy and one at IMG uh, Academy. And now we're in the process of working on a um, real fun event, and that's an NHL alumni fantasy hockey camp in this area. NHL alumni fantasy hockey camp. So what is that? Well, that's a, a camp where amateur hockey players have an opportunity to rub shoulders with NHL alumni, Hall of Famers, All-Stars. It's kind of a fantasy that happens in many sports, in football and in baseball, where uh, you're youth and you grow up, but unfortunately you don't make it to the big leagues, so you sometimes like to live that life. So this is an opportunity for them to uh, do it both on the ice and socially with, uh, with the NHL players. So NHL is National Hockey, Hockey League. League. Yes. Okay, just for our... Uh, you know, listeners and the team from know. this area is the Tampa Bay Lightning, up, up, not too far up the street. Thank you for that reminder. Now, this fantasy hockey camp um, where you can rub shoulders, when and where is that going to take place? It'll take place from May 2nd to May 6th. Uh, the players will all be staying at the Hyatt Regency downtown. They'll have rooms overlooking the water. And the ice sessions will be at the Ellington uh, Ice and Sports Complex. All right. Now, uh, May 2nd to the 6th. So there's going to be, of course, the um, National Hockey League alumni coming in, mm -hmm. and there's going to be amateur players coming in. Who are uh, the alumni, and where do all these amateur players come from? Well, we're fortunate in, uh, this year, and the way we're organizing the event is that we've got some great all-stars and Hall of Famers as alumni coming in. We have uh, Jacques Lemaire, who uh, has won 11 Stanley Cups uh, with the Montreal Canadiens and coaching the New Jersey Devils. We have uh, Phil Housley who was a seven-time All-Star and who also just coached the world, uh, the USA to the World Junior Championships in Europe. We have um, Mike Ramsey, former captain of the Buffalo Sabres. We have Claude Lemieux, who's won four Stanley Cups uh, with three different teams. Yvonne Lambert, four Stanley Cups with the Canadians. Uh, Stéphane Richer, two Stanley Cups. And Brian Bradley, who's played with the uh, Lightning. So you've got players that have won over 24 Stanley Cups in this group. So it's a pretty elite group. Very nice. Uh, and the amateurs, uh, are, are you, you know, where do you advertise this? How are you getting everybody here? Where well, we're doing, a, obviously, we're doing a lot of promotion and recruiting uh, in areas that where a lot of these players come from. We're keying on the Montreal area because, obviously, we have a lot of Montreal Canadians. We're uh, doing some work with the media up in Minnesota to, because, again, we have a kind of a Minnesota uh, kind of, uh, I guess, group coming down mm -hmm. as well with mm -hmm. alumni. And then we're doing it locally. We're promoting it in Tampa and in uh, the various arenas in Ellington, Brandon, and uh, down at uh, Germain Arena down in Fort Myers. So we hope to attract some local people too, local players there. So from the 2nd to the 6th, that is a lot of days. What is the itinerary? What what will people listening, uh, if they're interested, what, what are you going to be doing? Well, as there's more than just hockey. Uh, the players will arrive on the Thursday afternoon. Uh, get checked into their hotels, or if locally they'll be uh, coming down from their homes. And we have a cocktail reception uh, that evening from 5 to 7.30, and the NHL players will draft their teams. In other words, uh, the players will find out which team they're drafted on, like a regular draft that goes on. They're going to come up, have their picture taken with their jersey, which will be their personalized jersey they're going to get to wear on the Sunday, which will either be Montreal Canadiens red or Tampa Bay Lightning white. Cool. So we go through that through the whole <laughs> evening, and some cocktails by the water out in the terrace. So that's the Thursday night. The Friday night, the Friday morning, they have their breakfast. They get on the coach bus. We bring them down to the arena. Uh, we'll have the two rinks. They'll be practicing from 9.30 to 10.30 with their coaches. Then they come over and scrimmage uh, after from 10.30 to 11.30. We give them uh, a box lunch, get them on the bus, and then we take them down to either the golf course or to the marina. So they'll have a chance to do some golfing in the afternoon or deep sea fishing. And then in the evening, we have a hospitality suite, which is uh, sponsored by uh, BMO Private Bank. And uh, they'll be have a chance to socialize for a couple hours and talk about their day. We do the same thing on the uh, Saturday, the mm -hmm. same type of itinerary. And then Sunday is really our big day. Sunday we have a, um, a championship game from 12 to 2.30. And where the players will be wearing their uh, personalized jerseys, there will be the national anthems of the two countries, Canada and the USA. We'll have an official face-off with ambassadors from the uh, Shriners Hospitals for Children, who is the uh, charity that we'll talk about in a few minutes. 
And uh, then each team will have two NHL players integrated into the team as playing as well. So we'll have two coaching and two playing with the group. So each team will have NHL players playing with them on the ice that particular day. And they'll be playing for the championship, which is a um, replica of the Stanley Cup, which is the, the National Hockey League's uh, award. So there'll be a three-foot replica of the Stanley Cup. And the winning team players will each get another foot-and-a-half replica, all autographed by the uh, NHL pros and, and everything. And then uh, we go back to the evening, uh, back to the hotel. We have a gala dinner and where there'll be a question and answer period with the NHL players. They'll tell some stories about their careers and their lives. And then we have, obviously, the big sit-down gala, which will be great. And then we have the uh, charity auction, which will be emceed by Yvonne Lambert, who does all the Montreal Canadiens, once for the children's hospitals up in, in Montreal. And uh, we'll, the bat will be all the proceeds from the auction will be going to the Shriners Hospitals for Children in Tampa. That is a great itinerary. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the Shriners Hospital for um, yeah. Hospitals for Children in Tampa. So that is your nonprofit that you have involved yeah. that will benefit from the proceeds of the auction. Mm-hmm. And this gala dinner uh, that um, that you're doing Sunday night. Is that something that the public can participate in, or is that just the um, camp participants? Well, actually, originally it was just going to be the camp participants and the NHL alumni and the guests and their wives, but we've had an, uh, a lot of interest from uh, local companies that would like to get involved and purchase tables, opportunity to purchase tables and join us for the uh, that evening because, again, uh, we will have other VIP guests that we're planning uh, from the sports uh, field to invite. So it'll be uh, – and we'll also be an opportunity – for the people to donate and to uh, buy a lot of the or auction, purchase a lot of the memorabilia that we're going to have auctioned and the other prizes. So we figure we're going to open it up. Well, I think that's a great idea to open it up. So uh, you'll send me more information on the, on that about list. the event so we can announce that because that mm. will be Sunday night with proceeds to the Shriners Hospitals for Children in Tampa. And um, you'll have a, a, a you'll figure out how much it costs just mm-hmm. to go to the dinner if you can't participate in the entire camp. The camp itself, uh, with just a little bit of time left, um, what will it cost? Well, from the people coming from out of town, it's uh, $3,195. That's a deal. Which includes everything. There are other camps. There are other two camps that uh, go on in uh, Canada and the U.S., and they average five to 10000 So it is a good deal on that basis. The local players, it will be 2195 because obviously they don't have hotel accommodations and they might not be participating in some of the other events like the deep sea fishing or golf because they reside here. And then we have group discounts. If you're two or more, you get another uh, discount of uh, $200 off from the local. If you're th- five or more, you get more 300 So we have a variety of uh, discounts that people, when they call us to inquire, we can explain to them. Uh, Marvin Boisvert, you can reach Marvin at uh, 552-1270. And you can get more information and register for the Fantasy Camp at fesmevents.com. Again, fesmevents.com or 941-552-1270. Thank you very much, Marvin, for bringing that to my listeners. We are going to take a quick break. You're listening to Gail Shane and Friends, bringing you community and real estate talk. We'll be right back with Ian Harding. Luxury real estate, interior design, fine dining, an art and cultural calendar. All of this great information for Sarasota, as well as the entire Southwest Florida region, all in one place. Florida Homes and Lifestyles Magazine is the go-to source for all things related to real estate, home design, and entertaining from the Tampa Bay area to Sarasota, Fort Myers, and Naples. Florida Homes and Lifestyles is a beautifully designed, award-winning magazine that serves as a valuable reference guide and a wonderful read for locals and visitors alike. Get your copy of Florida Homes and Lifestyles today. Go to floridahomesmag.com to receive a complimentary print edition, and digital editions are always free and available 24 hours a day at floridahomesmag.com.
Welcome back to WSRQ. You're listening to Gail Shane and Friends, bringing you community and real estate talk. You can hear us worldwide on sarasotatalkradio.com and on your smartphones. Our shows are archived at gailshane.com. We're back with Ian Harding. Ian is a realtor with Keller Williams in Lakewood Ranch, helping people find their dream home or small business on the Gulf Coast of Florida. He moved to Lakewood Ranch with his wife, Michelle, and three children from Nottingham, England, where he had lived for the past 10 years. As well as working in real estate, Ian and Michelle also own Children's Therapy Works, a pediatric therapy clinic in Sarasota. With his previous work in the energy and utilities sector, Ian has lived in several different places, including Dublin, Ireland, and in the UK, Ian lived in London and Manchester. Ian, what made you move to Florida from the UK? Do I really need to answer that? Yes. <laughs> in a word, lifestyle. Lifestyle. Yeah, the climate here is so different from the UK, as we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that in itself provides such a great platform for a different life than you can lead in the UK. Focus is on the outdoors here. And, you know, I like the, the philosophy of not spending time with the family. It's more about spending time as a family. I like that. Um, yeah, I was working long hours in London. I was living away from home in hotels most of the week. Didn't get a chance to see the kids do some of their school events, ballet, sports, whatever they were up to, really. And it's, you know, it's difficult because once those opportunities pass, you can't turn the clock back. And, you know, we made the move here and now, you know, I see the kids every morning, have breakfast with them, and I see them every evening before I go to, they go to bed. So it's great. Really, really enjoying it. Well, that is definitely priceless. So you, you thought about Florida and then you narrowed it into Sarasota. Why Sarasota? Well, it's a little bit of a long story, <coughs> which I will, um, I will, I will truncate, but, um, I was working for the, a utility company in the UK who was owned by an American company, a Berkshire Hathaway company. I spent a lot of time in the US on business and we did get an opportunity to move to, uh, Portland, Oregon. And that fell through, uh, pretty much last minute, actually. And, you know, we were really disappointed, but within a few months, we, th- we realized how disappointed we really were and we, we wanted to do something exciting in our lives. We wanted to change our lives. So we um, we looked at doing it on our own, effectively. And because we were doing it on our own, we could choose. We didn't have to go to Portland, Oregon, which is a very nice place. But the, the climate in Florida, the laid-back lifestyle here on the Gulf Coast, it really made it um, a, a, an, an easy decision. So we did some research anywhere from Tampa Bay down to Venice. And we, you know, a lot of people ask me about why Sarasota. And I do tell them that... We, uh, we were traveling down Longboat Key. We'd come across the Sunshine Skyway. We, we kind of hung a right onto Anna Maria and we thought, this is looking really nice, looking interesting. Drove down Longboat Key, say, seen St. Armand's. And then when we drove over the, um, the John Ringling Causeway towards Sarasota, it just hooked us. It's just a stunning drive when you see it just appear in front of you. Um, and it was just an easy decision from there on in. We, we wanted to, to make Sarasota our home. We, we certainly take for granted the expression, we live in paradise, but really, truly, we live in paradise. We have these beautiful, beautiful pockets of um, spectacular areas to enjoy, and uh, it, it is a beautiful, beautiful place. Now, you are very, very busy. Uh, you, you do many things. What do you like to do in your spare time? Well, <clears throat> well at the moment, we are... We're spending every opportunity that we can to really do a lot of family things that um, we missed out on effectively over the last few years. So, you know, we're doing lots of family events with the children. Uh, We're looking to extend our social circles, make lots of friends, which is really important uh, when you live somewhere like this. Um, We've got annual passes for Disney World last year. So Mm -hmm. we're going up there once every six weeks. So the kids love it, obviously. And it's great when you don't have to cram everything in to one trip because it's a two hour drive back and you know that's really really good um and you know i suppose we're still on an extended vacation in some ways so you know we're working hard but you can just um, pack up go to the beach or go to one of the state parks or attend one of the many events that you were talking about earlier there's so much to do it's all on your doorstep you don't really need to plan it it's it's just a wonderful lifestyle there must be something that you might miss about the UK, would you ever think about moving back? Uh, at the moment, no. Um, we miss friends and family, obviously, but the the the, the trade-off for what you get out of life living here uh, it does outweigh it. And 
you know, we've got lots of visitors this year. We're, we're kind of fully booked. The guest room is fully booked up. We've got family coming over. We have friends coming over. And it's hard to actually <laughs> schedule them into the calendar. But, <laughs> um, it, it, you know, we're really looking forward to that. It'll be great. And in the UK, you know, we hardly knew our neighbours. Uh, over here, within a few days, we'd met all the neighbours. We'd, we'd been for meals out with them. They'd invited us into their home. They've just been absolutely amazing. It's probably the friendliest place I've ever lived. And I've lived around a few in the UK and Ireland. I agree. I believe it's the friendliest place I've ever lived. What is your um, professional background? You talk, We talked about your in your intro, um, but you are an electrical engineer by profession? Yes, by profession. My degree is in electrical engineering. It is um, power-based, so I work for a utility company in the power sector, energy and utilities. Um, and I worked for a UK utility company for 25 years, uh, the same one. We were um, we were bought by an American organization, as I mentioned. Um, the last couple of years, I worked for a built asset consultancy business um, who operated globally, uh, but again, in the energy and utility sector. When I was with the, U- the utility company um, and when they pushed me through my MBA, they propelled me into contract and commercial management. And I spent a lot of time working on business acquisitions, uh, focusing on technical, strategic, and commercially sensitive contractual matters. And I did love the work right up till last year when mm-hmm. I left the UK. Um, but it was not so much the content of the work, it was the, the time that I was spending traveling around the, you know, the UK, Ireland, and sometimes the US. Um, and as you get older, you know, things tend to take a different priority when you start a family. And, and, and that's why we, we wanted to change our lives and do something a little bit different. Well, Ian, you were afforded the opportunity to really look at your life and assess it and, and make some changes. And a lot of people are not able to do that or, or they're afraid. They might, you know, they might have that fear, uh, to make changes. But you, you were able to do it with Michelle and you did it. And then, you know, you, you probably were saying, uh, we can, you know, not work so hard, as you said, and enjoy the family and be with the kids. But then you came here and you have two businesses. Uh, you know, you and your wife have the one business together and then you are a realtor. So tell us about the two businesses that that you have here. Okay. Well, the the real estate business is, is really split in two as well. So I, that's been branded up as my home on the Gulf, my biz on the Gulf. So I'm looking to work with people uh, and focus on residential real estate services in Liquid Ranch and the wider Sarasota area, um, you know, helping them buy, sell, invest in real estate. And the second strand to that is the My Biz on the Gulf, which is helping people uh, realize their dream of owning a small business and, and help them buy an existing business with my discreet and professional negotiations mm-hmm. skills that I've acquired over the years. Um, and as you said, my wife and I also own uh, Children's Therapy Works. Uh, that's on Fruitville Road, just east of 75. Um, and that caters for the special needs of children and their families. We have 14 um, certified therapists across the disciplines of occupational, physical, and speech therapy. And, you know, children can have um, uh, different conditions, uh, autism, um, ADHD, and we, we we tend to those children and uh, help support the families get through uh, some difficult times. How did you choose that as a business together? How did you get into that? Yeah, it's quite a bit different from electrical engineering. Yes. And what happened with us we had to look at um and we had to look at several different ways of being able to acquire a visa to relocate to the us the most suitable one for us was to acquire an existing business make an existing um, sorry make an investment in an mm-hmm. existing business there were lots of other contingencies and criteria which we had to qualify also but one of my overriding ones was that i wanted um a long standing business, something that had been around for many years, um, and something that was stable and also part of the community. And we looked at several businesses and during our search when we came across Children's Therapy Works, it just seemed to fit into all of the criteria. It, it satisfied the visa requirements and it also satisfied our own qualifying criteria. Uh, and also it it felt right that we were buying a business that was helping others because the primary reason for us to buy the business was to help us. So it was like a two-way deal. We got something out of the business purchase, the visa, mm-hmm. and 
also the, the community and the families in the area get something out by the support that we provide to them. Something for everyone. Now, why did you choose real estate after being uh, in such a different background? Uh, and I often get asked that question. And initially, I wanted to develop my business brokering skills. And my business plan was around business brokering only. So when I started researching what I needed to do to get a business broker's uh, license in Florida, it's um, the first step is to get a real estate license. So I actually <coughs> thought about my business plan and I altered it because people like me who relocate to Florida, not just from the UK, but it could be from other parts of the US or Canada, for instance, uh, are looking for a business investment and a home. So I thought, well, I want to offer that one-stop shop and offer both services as my home on the Gulf, my biz on the Gulf. So I focus on both residential and small to medium-sized business acquisition. All right, so let me ask you, um, your journey, this this wonderful journey that you took, um, what did you learn from it? Lots. <clears throat> if, if I was to summarize um, in three or four wor words, really, what the, the important things are, if I was giving that advice to anyone else, would be, um, and I often say this, um, failure to plan is planning for failure. So lots of preparation. You can never do enough. Ensure an attention to detail from thorough research. Um, communication and seek the advice of others, but always be mindful of the facts before acting because there are lots of spurious and there's lots of spurious information out there. Mm -hmm. And and ultimately never give up on your dream and achievement is you know, it gives you an amazing self-satisfaction when you when you achieve it. Failure to plan is planning for failure. That's a really good one. Ensure an attention to detail from thorough research. Communication, extremely important, of course. And uh, never give up on your dream. That's uh, that's that's great. Um, and so you can reach Ian at myhomeonthegolf.com. That's G-U-L-F, myhomeonthegolf.com. You can talk to Ian about real estate. You can talk to Ian about life changes. <laughs> you can okay. talk to Ian about um, the, the other business that they have, the pediatric uh, children's therapy works. And uh, his number is 941-725-1468, 725-1468. Great, uh, great to find out more and more and more about you, my friend, Ian. Thank you, Thank Kim. you for bringing all that information to our listeners. We're going to take a quick break. You will be right back with Sherry Phillips. To take you out of this place, someone you could lend a hand in return for grace. It's a beautiful day. Waterscapes, pools, and spas. There simply is no better way to welcome the day or to start your evening than relaxing poolside. Your Waterscapes, pools, and spas design takes you away on a tropical vacation every time you step outside of your home, offering the perfect backdrop for an afternoon of solitary reflection or an evening of celebration with friends. Waterscapes, pools, and spas. 941-328-1035 or Waterscapes, pools, and Com. Make every day a getaway day. Welcome back to WSRQ. You're listening to Gail Shane and Friends, bringing you community and real estate talk. You can hear us worldwide on SarasotaTalkRadio.com and on your smartphones. And our shows are archived at GailShane.com. We're back with Ian Harding and his guest, Sherry Phillips and Mary Smith. We have Sherry uh, that we're going to talk to now. And Sherry Phillips is an executive business coach and owner of Dosh Management. Sherry's coaching areas include, but are not limited to, delegation, relationship building conversations, employee empowerment, perception management, and leadership development. As an entrepreneur herself, 
Sherry has learned the tough lessons of being a business owner. The combination of this experience, as well as a real, direct, and honest approach, Sherry and her team of coaches help bring new awareness and tools to businesses in order to help them reach their goals and achieve success they never knew was possible. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning. So, you know, we're talking about life changes and and achieving success and reaching goals and, um, you know, so many things that we're going to talk to you about that Ian and his family got to experience. And you, Sherry, um, you know, from talking to you before the show, you've only been in this beautiful area for four months. Yes, that's correct. So that was life-changing and, um, you know, different for you. How did, how, how did that feel to you? It was great. It was one of the best decisions that we made. Um, we uh, still have offices in New York. Um, we chose to move here based on the lifestyle um, that Sarasota could offer. Um, we uh, owned a house here since 2005, and we decided to use it. And we decide we have five boys, and um, it's a great place to, to, to bring them up. We have one in New York now. We have two in college, one in New York, and one in California. Wow. So you get to um, visit in lots of great places. Mm-hmm. All right, so Dosh Management, your logo um, has a tagline that says, there is no greater investment than in yourself and your people. Can you explain the meaning behind that? Sure. Um, it really stemmed from a lot of our experiences with our own businesses and understanding that um, we believe in that investing in yourself and your employees leads to increased productivity, growth, and happiness. I believe that, too. Um, in what ways do you invest in yourself and your people? Well, we invest the time to understand yourself and also those around you will bring greater awareness that can be really transformational. I also believe in investing in the relationships with your employees and investing in their growth. It's a win-win, and it doesn't stop there. It can be applied to all of your relationships, both personally and professionally. Well, they definitely um, intertwine, mm-hmm. uh, you know, every day and every minute. Also in, in your logo, you have the words people, possibilities, progress. How does that originate? People, possibilities, and progress is actually the foundation of our coaching. We believe in people, we believe in possibilities, and we believe in progress. We also use this tool that we call the three circles of conversation. Three circles of conversation. Okay, so um, can you explain each circle? Sure, absolutely. The first circle is people. And if you think of conversations, this is where about 80% of the conversations occur. It's kind of that water cooler conversation, (laughs) the gossip, the chit chat, the how's the weather. Um, And um, we... We believe that starting in the first circle of conversation is really where all important conversations start. We then um, move into the second circle, which is possibilities. The second circle is moving conversations in the realm of possibilities, where we believe and discuss possibilities and bring about opportunities that can lead to amazing results. And studies show that only 17% of the conversations occur in the second circle. Wow. The third circle is where it all happens and it's acting on these possibilities which will ultimately lead to success and that's what happens when people move their conversations into the third circle progress three percent of the conversations occur in the third circle and it's coincidentally that it also is three percent of the people who control 97 percent of the wealth this proves that the wealthiest know the secret that 97% don't or simply won't act upon. Okay, so, you know, it's talking, 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 and um, I use the word discover, Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I'm, you know, meet somebody or in in a working environment or even, you know, in personal and professional environment. It's discovery and it's listening and and asking questions, but most importantly, it's listening. And seeking to understand. Seeking to understand, yes. So that's the part of 
that listening and um, you're hoping that the other person is listening as well. I mean, it is a two-way mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. So you have to know when to pause and when to stop and when to get through all those circles. and Right, and, and really ask the right questions. And ask the right questions. Ian, um, you know, you, you form the show, you invite the business and, and your nonprofit uh, today. So why Sherry and Dosh? management? Well, I met Shari and her husband, Doug, uh, in Dosh Management. I met them at the, um, or through the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance. We're both active members. And um, I believe that we all need some coaching, whether it be in life or in business. Uh, you know, when we're children, we get coaching from our parents. And I just really like the business model that, that Dosh Management have. And, you know, it looks like an excellent coaching program that really lets you achieve your life ambitions, not just take your business to the next level. Right. And speaking from personal experience, um, you know, I had some affinity thinking about those types of um, things that Dosh Management can do for you. Well, Sherry, back to the three circles, as I find them so cool and interesting. And, you know, um, on the website there, um, like a, a deep red and orange and a beautiful lime green, so very bright, people, possibilities, progress, what impact has these three circles had on your clients? Well, we have helped infuse the three circles of conversations, um, people, possibilities, and progress, into cultures in such a way that allows team conversations to move through these circles, which results in meetings being facilitated in a way that leads to true progress. Have we all been to meetings that didn't go anywhere? Yes. And yes. This is a great tool that helps facilitate that so there's no more unproductive meetings. Well, how do you teach others to use these um, three circles tool? Well, first we explain them and then we use them as a tool and we lead by example. Some people are very comfortable never leaving the first circle and there's some people that will just never leave that circle. Um, we like to show people how it feels to move through these conversations, move through the circles. Then they facilitate the conversations and will help others move through them too until it becomes natural. And it will when you experience how great it feels to have the conversations about possibilities that lead to progress. You know, it's, it's very different. Um, you know, you, you just have to work through it as you do and um, you get to uh, the progress. Um, how do you share this great tool uh, with the world? Well, we have a great group of individual coaching sessions available, as well as an eight-month leadership development course, which we also design custom progress for those who have more specific needs they wish to work on. And um, our listeners uh, can definitely learn more about you. Um, how how do you like um, you know people to find out? Is it your website? Is it uh, where where can we find you? Well, we, there's lots of places. Um, we have our websites, which is dashmanagement.com, mm-hmm. sherry-phillips.com, and we are active on all the major social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, and Pinterest. Um, you can also sign up for our weekly Dosh Management newsletter, and we feature new topics each week with valuable tips and tools that apply to both personal and professional lives. So I would imagine that we might have some listeners asking, um, how long do you uh, need to be coached? Um, you know, and then I, probably the answer is it depends on, you know, why, you know, you are being called upon. And so, you know, how, how would you answer that? Well, it depends on what they're looking to accomplish. Um, you know, I mean, some goals can be achieved in 30 days. Some can be achieved in four months. Some may take years to develop. And it's understanding where they are and where they want to be and helping develop a plan to get there. Um, Sherry, I was uh, on your website, dashmanagement.com, and you and Doug uh, have some fabulous testimonials. There was one that I liked that I'd really like to share with our listeners, and here it is, quote, unquote. I was so grateful to have Sherry's support and guidance throughout our coaching process Our conversations allowed me to think about how I might handle a few difficult situations and to think 
through a reorganizing process. Her empathetic ear and probing questions provided me with new insights and fresh perspective. What an invaluable gift. I really uh, like that, and especially the empathetic ear and probing questions. As we were saying, it's that listening and questioning. Mm -hmm. So, And helping others change their thoughts. Because when you change the way that you look at things, the things that you look at will change. Say that again. When you change the way that you look at things, the things that you look at will change. Very good. Very good. Sherry can be reached at uh, 579-4600. That's 941-579-4600 or doshmanagement.com. Thank you for bringing the three circles to us. Thank you, Gail. We're Thank gonna- you, Ian. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Gail Shane and Friends, bringing you community and real estate talk. We'll be back with Mary Smith. Southwest Florida's very own Neal Communities has been named one of America's best builders for 2012 by Builder Magazine. Neal was the only builder from Florida to be recognized nationwide, earning top honors in their category. This was Neal's first year entering America's best builders. According to the judges, Neal was the clear entry to win this prestigious award. Congratulations to all at Neal Communities on this great accomplishment. Welcome back to WSRQ. You're listening to Gail Shane and Friends, bringing you community and real estate talk. You can hear us worldwide on sarasotatalkradio.com and on your smartphones. And our shows are archived at gailshane.com. This is the part of our show where I like to highlight how realtors give back to the community. It is the highlight of the show. (laughs) One of my most favorite parts always um, is to highlight nonprofits. So Ian has invited Mary Smith. Mary is the Executive Director of the Family Network on Disabilities of Manatee, Sarasota, or FND, Minnesota. Mary is responsible for overseeing the program, including staff, administration, and operations, with the assistance and direction from the Board of Directors. She is a trained and certified special education advocate, has completed a variety of trainings, workshops, and conferences in the field of disabilities, and continues to attend many more such events on an annual basis. Mary also has two young adults with significant disabilities, Down syndrome and autism. Her degree is in business applications, and she worked in the private sector for many years in the field of computers and business management. Mary, thank you for being with us today to talk about FND Minnesota. Thanks for having me. So, Mary, uh, what does FND Minnesota do? Well, basically what we do is we provide a variety of services and resources to parents that are raising children with special needs and disabilities in Manatee and Sarasota County. And uh, what kind of services or assistance do you actually provide? Well, we have some really unique things that are specifically catering to what we consider caregiver support. One of those is we provide an in-home respite program where we provide um, a trained individual that can come in and provide the family with a break. Um, Raising a child with special needs, especially if it's significant needs, can be very stressful on a home. The other things that we do is we provide some educational opportunities with an annual disability conference and workshops. We also do some um, disability education and awareness in the public school system. We have some great collaborations with uh, the the Sarasota and Manatee County School Districts, along with other agencies and providers in our area. 
Mary, how long um, has FND Minnesota been around? Well, believe it or not, we've been around since 1986. Um, actually started out as a very small parent to parent support group. It was mothers coming alongside of other mothers wanting to help them uh, raise and care and understand their children's needs. And then it eventually grew into Family Network on Disabilities. Um, in 1992, we changed our name to Family Network on Disabilities and took a new commitment to providing more direct services that the community was in need of. Yeah, uh, does Manatee and Sarasota have a lot of children in our community with disabilities? Well, it depends upon what your definition of a lot is. I can give you some numbers. That would be um, great. In between Manatee and Sarasota County, and these are public school system numbers, there's okay. approximately 13,000 kids that are identified as having a disability. And that's anything from a speech language impairment to a severely profound child. Out of that number, about 5,000 or more are considered significantly impaired, moderate to significantly impaired, where they need more specialized services and they uh, need extra supervision. So that's a lot of kids between our two county area. And that doesn't include any children that are under the age of three or children that may be homeschooled or are in private schools. So the number is probably actually higher. Those are just statistics that we can get um, from the Department of Education. Well, let me ask Ian. Uh, there are thousands of nonprofits in our communities. Why did you um, invite and what is near and dear to you about Family Network on Disabilities of Manatee, Sarasota? Uh, well, first of all, it's an amazing organization. I think they do an absolutely fantastic job uh, in providing that hope and support for families who have children with disabilities. Uh, but at Children's Therapy Works, my clinical supervisor, uh, a lady called Nancy Marsh, uh, she's given much of her life to helping um, families um, and children like this. And she also volunteered at FND and worked with, with Mary for many years. And because of that, I wanted to provide the platform here and now for Mary to share all the good work that they do. Well, I'm glad you did. Uh, it's nice to bring this to our listeners. Mary, how can FND help families in our community? Well, what we like to do is we like to try to come alongside the family um, because for many families, this will be a lifelong journey. Uh, it's not like at 18 when a child goes off to college and right. starts their life and their career and everything. For many families, it will be lifelong. So they need to learn how to navigate different systems of care between the education system, the medical system, uh, employment, if that's going to be a possibility. Um, and so we like to come alongside and nurture and mentor families um, to help them get through these different systems and processes and to also understand and deal with some of the, if you want to say pitfalls and the happy and sad times, you know, um, which you will have. It's kind of like I refer to it as peaks and valleys. Um, families will be on high peaks and then there'll be a valley and they have to figure out how do they get out of that valley and get back to the peak where their family can be um, whole and good and not stressed and, and that kind of uh, situation. So that's what we like to do with our educational programs, with our caregiver support programs. We look at mothers um, because mothers t typically tend to be the primary caregiver. Mm -hmm. And so we look at how can we focus in on mothers. Um, we have a specific program called Moms Away where we actually cater to moms for a 24-hour period and help them realize um, that they're not in this alone and that there's people out there that they can turn to. But they also need to think about themselves and uh, work on stress management and different types of techniques that can help them through these times. So you have Moms Away. And um, what are some of the other uh, services and programs? Um, we do, like I said, we do an annual disability conference. This year will be our 14th annual disability conference, which I think is cool. Um, and we've brought in national speakers on a, a variety of topics. In the past, we've had everything from autism to ADHD to reading um, to special education law. This year's conference is going to be, uh, it's focusing on transitions um, and how transitions don't just happen when you leave school. 
they're a constant for a family with a child with special needs, and families need to learn how to deal with different transitions like preschool to kindergarten, those elementary years, elementary to middle, middle to high, high school, and then and then high school and beyond. What's their child going to do? Are they, are they going to be able to go to post-secondary education, or do they need to look at a vocational training program, or do they need to look at one of the um, adult programs that we have in our community? So that is scheduled for um, April 27th. Uh, at, it's a Saturday, and it will be held at Woodland the Community Church, which is located off of State Road 70 in um, East Manatee County. And that's one of the things that we do. Um, we also provide some advocacy services for families where we, uh, once again, are trying to mentor and teach families about how to advocate for their child in different situations. One of our latest programs that we have gotten into is our pediatric enrichment program, which um, basically we're coming alongside local pediatricians and working with them on identifying children that may be at risk for either a developmental delay or autism. Autism is uh, the most prevalent developmental delay or a disability uh, in existence today. One in 88 children are being diagnosed on the autism spectrum. It's it's pretty much at an epidemic uh, level. One in 88. One in 88 with boys being identified. There's more boys than girls. And so we need to find these kids younger and get them the services and the intervention that they need. So we work with pediatricians on a, with a developmental screening uh, protocol that we've created. Excellent. And so um, this year we were fortunate that we got a really nice grant from the CVS Foundation, and they are uh, helping to support that program so that we can reach out to local pediatricians. And you have a newsletter that um, people can uh, sign up for. Yes. Um, so... That is some unbelievable services and programs. There's a few more, but they no, probably take all day. Know, well, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm speechless for a second, but let me get back here on track. Okay, so all of these services and programs, Mary, um, how do you get them all done? Well, I have a great board of directors who are very supportive, and I have great staff um, that help me. I am not a one-woman show and cannot be a one-woman show. And um, they just come alongside. What's really unique about our organization is most of the people either in administrative positions or on the board of directors have some connection with disabilities, which makes us kind of unique. Um, we have parents of children with disabilities. We have um, providers. We have speech therapists, behavioral therapists, occupational therapists that sit on our board of directors or our staff, so they they understand what this means to Absolutely. families. Absolutely, as well as you. You right. have two sons. You know, you know exactly um, what everyone is going through. Right. I actually have a son and a daughter. Son and a daughter, two children. Well, son I have three. Actually, three. <laughs> three. And all three of mine have special needs. All three. Um, my oldest daughter has Down syndrome. She's 21. My son is 19 and has autism. And my youngest daughter is 17 and has learning disabilities, but she's an honor student in high school. So she's doing really well and getting very excited about planning uh, for college. Right. Which Beautiful. Which is going to be a whole new step. But we're getting ready to make a big transition, um, it, which is the adulthood transition, um, and looking at what are our kids going to do for the rest of their life and what my husband and I are going to do for the rest of our lives, you know. Yes. So for the last 21 years, it's totally revolved pretty much around these children and what they've needed and, and getting them to a certain place and that kind of thing. And it's kind of exciting now to be looking at what are we going to do, you know, right. and how are we going to do it? And are we going to be able to do it and that kind of thing. And, and that's why... Um you need and 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 people need family network on disabilities of Manatee Sarasota because it is lifelong you have uh, the conference coming up is really really big and again April 27th from 8 30 to 3 at Woodland uh, Community Church you have lots of fundraisers you're going to be part of the 36 hour giving partners event and challenge match yes we actually have a challenge match we have been um, very fortunate that there is a Family Fund, the Kim Kibler Family Fund has issued us a challenge. And the challenge is 
If we can raise $5,000, they will match it with $5,000. I think you'll do it. I hope so. You, you are very, very passionate about what you do. You can hear it. It's wonderful. So I think you will do it. And you'll let me know when you have some fundraisers coming up, and we'll promote them on the air. Definitely. Um, let me get people to your website. It's fndmanasota.org, fndmanasota.org. And you can reach Mary at 928-0682. That's 941-928-0682. I want to thank everyone for listening to Gail Shane and Friends, sponsored by Neil Communities. Thank you, Marvin Boisvert, Sherry Phillips, Mary Smith, and my co-host, Ian Harding. Thank you to my producer, Eric Hilgey. Join Gail Shane and Friends every Saturday, 10 a.m. on WSRQ Radio and SarasotaTalkRadio.com. <laughs>